All right, well, praise God, man. I had a great time. Uh, and so I've documented. <laughs> it may take a little while for us to get rolled. And by the way, I just want you to know, listen, I mean this when I say it. <clears throat> I really do feel like the Lord led me to do what I'm doing tonight. I really felt like he led me by his spirit to, to document this trip. I didn't understand that it was going to come out the way that it did, that it was going to be documented in such detail. It started off just him telling he like speaking to my spirit to take pictures. But it's simple, as crazy as it sounds, the other times I've gone to Mexico, I took a couple pictures here and there, but I really felt impressed to take pictures. Uh, one thing I want to say is this, is that, and so anyway, the point is, I don't know how long it's going to take to do this. I'm, I'm, I want you to know I am wanting to be respectful of your time. Uh, I will say this. I worked on it from 3.30 this morning until 1.38 this afternoon, nonstop, laying up in the bed doing it. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, praise God for that. And uh, yeah, so I just want to kind of share with you now what my hope is in some of this is, first of all, the documentation is for the people that have been faithful to giving to the Mexico mission. You know, we've we've had several people in our church that are faithful to giving to the mission work over there. Some people five dollars a month, some people ten dollars a month. The church gives a certain amount, but with what everybody adds, it really does make a difference. I want to remind you that Gowdy, some of you may not know him, but Gowdy and I have been working together in the gospel for several years. And Gowdy had a uh, Gowdy had a stroke. How long y'all ago y'all think that was? Three About three months ago? Three, months. I mean, this is a miracle, man. Yeah. God yeah. really yeah. moved. And uh, it, so anyway, let's get started. So this was something silly. I actually was going to send this to the text group church because on the airplane, I was highlighting my Bible. And I was like, with the way the lighting was, I was like, look at how cool this is. And that was going to be my first text on my trip. I ended up not doing it. But this was coming out of 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. It says... We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. That scripture has really been in my heart and in my mind for quite some time now. But isn't it true that that's what we're here to offer people to let them know that there is hope, that there is light. Amen. And that if they'll receive the Lord, that he will come in and he will make a difference. Now. You know, I want you to also know that as I begin to present this, this teaching or presentation, whatever you want to call it, this is the way I saw it through my eyes, the way I felt like the Holy Spirit allowed me to see it. I don't know that everybody that was on this trip got the same thing out of it that I did, but this is what the Lord showed me, and I want to communicate it to you because I'm hoping that it'll encourage some other people to start giving, even if it's just a little bit a month. And also, we have people that give online and people that only watch us on video. And so I'm hoping that this will encourage you also to, to give to this work because I really am convinced that God is doing an absolutely magnificent thing over there in Mexico. So one of the, some of the scriptures that stuck out to me while I was there was this one here, Romans chapter 12, verse 13, distributing to the necessity of the saints given to hospitality. I'm telling you right now, I experienced more godly hospitality than I've ever experienced in my life on this trip. I was, it, I, I got to tell you that parts of it brought conviction to my heart. I, I, I don't feel like I'm going to be mean tonight. I feel like I'm in such a good spirit. Um, but I was really convicted even for being an American. Now, let me say, let me clear that up a little bit. I thank God that I was born in America. I'm so grateful that I was not born in another nation. And I'm not here to fuss at anybody. I'm here to tell you that at times I was ashamed of myself. I'm just going to be honest with you. And I've been to Mexico before, but it hit me in a way like never before. The way that these people came together, it was like an ongoing book of acts situation where the people were of one mind, one accord, unity of the spirit, and it was amazing. They gave of what they had. One In my Strong's Dictionary, it says that this word hospitality, part of it, the definition means lover of strangers. I experienced that while I was on this trip, a lover of strangers. So I brought a couple more out of the book of Acts that ministered to my heart while I was there. The multitude of them that believed were of one heart one soul, neither said any of them that 
Aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. I saw, watch these people give to people that they didn't even know. I watched these people give for ministry in a way that the way that it all flowed together was just absolutely amazing in my heart and in my mind. And then I skipped over two verses. Neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of the lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. We've read these scriptures before. But what I wanted to tell you is I noticed that the scripture that was in between those two. Here it is. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. The power of the resurrection. Thank God for the cross because without the cross, there is no resurrection. The cross is the death side of where the old man dies. And you know what? It's an ongoing work. The cross is supposed to be an ongoing work where there's a crucifixion of our flesh, where there's a death to self. But it's on the other side, the resurrection power. The same power that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Amen. And it's when the resurrection power of God hits us and begins to transform us and that power begins to move through us but as the apostles gave great witness of the resurrection of the Lord great grace was upon them all signs and wonders and miracles followed them as they preached the gospel alright in this story that's how you spell character that's how you spell character in Spanish okay characteres and so the, I, got, I, got to, I got to present the characters of this story to you okay here's here's here you go Hermano Gaudenzio Munez. Now, I don't know about you, but in the past, I'm probably like, what is, what is Gaudi doing with that stick? Does he think he's Moses or something? I probably would have thought that way before in the past. What, what, what is he doing walking around with it? Well, maybe it's because he had a stroke three months ago, and the brother just now climbed up partway up a mountain to preach the gospel. You see what I'm saying? I'm just trying to share with y'all the way my heart's been in the past and how whenever I'm seeing things now, I'm just like, hallelujah, Lord, what are you doing? So this is the resume of Gaudenzio Munez. He's a lover of men's souls. Now, some of you may, I don't even know what you think about God. I'm just saying, some of you that know him, y'all might, they ain't no telling what you think about him. But I, I've been, you know, sleeping in the same room with this man. I've been on multiple trips with this man. I was the first person, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, to share the message of the cross with Galdenzio Munez. Amen. And look, he's a preacher of the gospel. He, you can't understand him when he preaches in English, but you should see that dude on fire when he's preaching in Spanish. I'm telling you right now, he's breathing fire when he's preaching in Spanish. Uh, he's an evangelist. Hallelujah. An evangelista. I don't know. Event. I'm just tell, telling you, I know typically uh, masculine nouns in and an O, but, but that's how they put on a brochure, evangelista. And he's an apostle. I believe he did. He is the true definition. You should see the churches that this brother is planting. You should see the work that's going on over there. It's, it's amazing what God has done. He's a missionary. Hallelujah. He's a missionary. And so, look, I'm just telling you that Gaudi's, the work that Gaudi's doing, when he goes over there, that brother's a boss, man. I'm telling you right now, oh, look, let me not get ahead of myself. This is Pastor Ramon right here. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! I feel the Holy Spirit. This is our main man on the ground. I'm trying to get this brother over here. He won't be able to speak English to you, but I'm trying to get this brother. He's coming to Texas in January. I feel the Holy Ghost all over this. This brother, he led, He was leading this guy to the Lord. I got a video. Y'all got to hear the way this brother's praying with this man, but that'll be later. And look, this is Pastor Ramon. Amen? Hallelujah. Pastor Ramon right here uh, in this other picture. And I felt like this would be, a, he's all the way to your left, okay? I felt like that was a little bit of a better picture that you might be able to see him there. So, uh, and yeah, so there's Pastor Ramon. He's a lover of men's souls. He's a powerhouse preacher. Hallelujah. He's an evangelista. Amen. I would say he's an apostle. He's planting churches himself. His own, he's building the second church right now. Amen. Uh, he's a missionary. He's a signs and wonders following this brother. I mean, I'm talking about major healings. I'm talking about multiple people with stage four cancer. You know what? Uh, healed. 
people with blind eyes, eyes opened up. Uh, and, and I mean, just signs of wonder. And you know, Gowdy laughed the other one night we were coming back. He said, Ramon admitted to me about six years ago when all the miracles started happening. He said, for a little bit, Gowdy, I thought I was something special. I thought it was me. But the Lord had to deal with his heart and show him. But I'm just saying that signs and wonders are, are taking place. It's an amazing thing. And suffer not the little children. He loves kids. Oh, my God. The one time whenever I went over there uh, with Gowdy, Gowdy's like, you all let Pastor Matt. He said he can preach to the kids. And while I was preaching to them kids, I mean, at that time he had about 30, 40. Now he's got about 60 of them. And he just sat there with this big old smile on his face, like preaching to them kids. He built that church, okay, uh, that he has right now. The only room in there with an air conditioner is for the kids. Hallelujah. He's a builder of churches. Look, he's an ex-construction foreman. Look, I, they brought us to the work site. I'm going to show you. And, I mean, he's got him out there working, building that second church. It, it, he, it, he is an amazing Man of God. Now I wanted to put Campico because I wanted that's where he's from, okay? And that's where his ministry is located. That's where his church is. Um, that's where once a week. Now he's an event. When I'm talking about an evangelist, I'm talking about this brother building a church. And he goes and he preaches at the hospital once a week. And, and I'm talking about outside. It's different in Mexico. You understand what I'm saying? You don't go sit there complaining to the doctor because you ain't been because you've been waiting in the waiting room for two hours. You they ain't no waiting room, okay? Yeah, we'll call you when, when we're ready. All right. And, and so his ministry is in Tampico. I want you to understand that because one of the places that we ministered to was two hours away. But in his other church that he's built is about 40 miles from Tampico. Before, in, in case I forget, at the church that he's building right now, you'll see where he is so far with it. He's already got 41 people committed to the church. And they're having church out there once a month, and it's, it doesn't even have a roof on it. And these are these are from him going out there and winning souls, bro. He's winning souls, and they're coming into the church, and then the people that are in the church are going out there and winning more souls. Hallelujah! And God is moving. Amen. This right here is Paco uh, uh, Francisco, aka Paco. Well, what is Paco? Now, these characters that I'm trying to tell you about, these are our main guys on the ground. This is, there's a group, there's a team of people that have been working and Gowdy has brought these people up in the message of the cross. At first Ramon, this is many, many years ago, 11, 12 years ago, he wasn't even about the message. And then when it came on, that was it. it he took off. Amen. Paco bought in right away. He was actually at one time, he's a lover of men's souls. He was on the, he was, he's an evangelist. He was on the radio uh, he's an ex radio preacher. I'm like, well, what happened, Gally? He's like, well, it got expensive, but more than that, they really just didn't like what he was preaching. Mm -hmm. They wanted a different message. Okay. Uh, he oversees eight houses of bread, is what they call it, because they're not actual churches. So, eight of them. The largest one has 38 people in it. Okay. So, I mean, they, they that's, that's about the size of, well, that's more people than what we got here tonight, I believe. Amen. Uh, helps. What do you need somebody to do? You remember what I was talking about? I was talking to somebody recently about the grunt work. Hey, man, I'm going to get you to do the grunt. This guy right here, whenever Gowdy says, I need something, he makes it happen. Now, now you got to understand, this guy used to sell ice cream using a donkey. And then somebody killed his donkey. And then somehow he got another donkey. These people are so resourceful, right? But now he's in, he's in full-time ministry. He's doing the work of the Lord. Amen. So that's Paco. And Paco's a great brother in the Lord. He's, he's stationed out of Tampico also. Now this is, this is uh, Sister Pastor Rosario. All right? We're going to talk more about her church in a moment. But, you know, <laughs> one of the beautiful things is, and we're, we're, we're planning on you can see in this picture that there's some expansion going on in her church, and uh, we, we've helped her uh, significantly. But, you know, one of the Gowdy is very, very serious. Like, when he goes over there, when I'm telling y'all he's like a boss, he'll, he'll tell them when he, when it, look, he gets an invitation to go preach. He's like, we don't have anything to give you other than Jesus and the truth. And whenever we're done giving you Jesus and the truth, if you want some more, you get us to come back. But we're not here to give you anything but the truth. You got to understand false doctrine. You think it's bad in America. It is bad in America, but it's really bad in Mexico. Even whenever they were first evangelized, they were evangelized by the Catholics. And then there was an intermixture of all kind of voodoo mixed with Catholicism. It's a mess over there. And, 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 and people are being taken advantage of. But this sister right here. Uh, she she's doing a great work. She's got a heart uh, for people. Um, she uh, she's a church planter. Amen. She's uh, she, her uh, 
She's a wife. Amen. And the reason I put that out there is because Gowdy made a big deal about that. He said we've had other. He said the great thing about this, Matt, is that her husband behind her 110 percent. And he plays guitar in their church. And and he said, see, we've had other women on the ground that love the Lord and are doing the work of God in their powerhouses for the kingdom. But their husbands aren't with them. And it's very difficult. But he said, we can we can get behind this woman right here and we can really get behind her because she's doing a great work. Amen. Uh, she she's a she I, I forgot what that meant. Lord, oh, she's a lover of souls. Amen. She's a lover of souls. And I got her. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not going to I'm going to keep on going, but she's. She's stationed also out of Tampico. Amen. So this is this is one more person. Uh, this you can't really see his face. I didn't even know what what this. This is the first morning when we woke up, and the only thing I knew about this guy was that I was eating breakfast at his house. And then later, Gowdy tells me that he's also one of our pastors. His name is uh, Luis Pastor Luis Meza. And so, had I known, I probably would have asked more questions, but I didn't know. But we ate breakfast over here. That's his wife back there cooking. I know you can't really see it, but these women serve. Look, this is the road outside in the front of his house. That is the van we traveled in. But I mean, look, I watch these people. <laughs> Listen, some missionaries come in up in here. They say, we need a Land Rover. I rode in this van for over 800 miles through streets like this up mountains. And I'm here to tell you, if they got a brake line leak, they figure something out, they'll stick a nail in it until they can get the piece to fix it. These people are resourceful. These people make a dollar go a long way. And it's all about the glory of God and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and doing the work of the ministry. Amen. Uh, I, for some reason, I took a picture. This was inside of his kitchen. That's his daughter. And I just took a picture of it after I found out and realized he was one of our pastors. You know, I, I said, whoa, well, let me use that. Her name is Anna Anna Luz Meza. Look how cute she is. Amen. I got I got to tell you, the reason I want you to be understand this, too, <laughs> is that Gowdy made the comment more than once. Matt, we paid for this. He uses the plural pronoun. We paid for this. The church paid for this. Amen. So he's stationed out of Tampico also. Now, this is one other character that I wanted to mention to you. Manuel Espinal. Manuel is somewhat new to, the, to, to what we're doing over there, but he's no rookie to the kingdom of God. He's been saved for 60 years. He was, uh, he was this is another picture of him because some of y'all might have seen him before because he, uh, he's a church planner. He's, he's already paid for many churches to be built throughout the years in various places like Honduras and Guatemala. Uh, he's a preacher of the gospel, man. He's a powerful preacher. He's, a, he's an evangelist. Amen. He is a missionary. Hallelujah. He, he was a translator, was a translator for Jimmy Swagger Ministries for 38 years. Wow. Praise God. Um, he's a financier of the kingdom of God. Amen. Um, he is an ex-restaurateur and he's a contractor currently. He's a, con he's a commercial. He does commercial residential. He does roofs. So that was interesting. But look, this man of God. And so then what I'm trying to tell you is it's a big deal to have American mindsets on the ground over there. Now, Ramon works more like an American. I've seen it with my own eyes. The idea of the vision. You know what I'm saying? But 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 even Gally said, but it was really the message that transformed Ramon. Because at first he had a little bitty vision. Because his church hadn't started off. He just had like a little tarp. Uh, over his church, and, and you'll see, you'll get to see a little bit of that. But this guy here, this this guy, and and so he came in when I went the last time to Tampico, and Gowdy had that pastors conference. That was his first time there. Gowdy met him at the ministry. He preached the pastors conference. It was very uh, powerful. And since then, he's been going back and he's been pouring into it. But you know, he's a uh, so yeah. He was born in Honduras. He lives in Baton Rouge. And he was, and on this trip, he was mostly working out of Tampico. Okay, all right. Look, look there, <laughs> there's another character right there. <laughs> I picked the goofiest looking picture that I could find, and here's Matt trying to sow seed and gather fruit. Man, my daddy would have been proud of me. See, what happened was that night we were in the mountains. Well, let me just tell you, we were in the mountains. It was raining. The suitcase. 
was up on the top. I was like, man, I'm not asking those guys to go grab my suitcase. So these were the clothes I had in my backpack. I slept in them with my dress shoes. My dad would have been proud of me wearing wingtip hallelujah. shoes and hallelujah. But yeah, and then they thought it was funny. So they wanted me to put that on because they that's what they used to fill up with uh, mandarins and whenever they're picking fruit. And I thought that, yeah, that was a good idea, trying to sow seed and gather fruit. All right, so I got you a little map here, and I'm trying to show you that that state, you may not be able to see it, but that brown state is Tamaulipas. That's Tamaulipas in Mexico. So we, we, we also went to San Luis, Puerto C, and to Hidalgo, okay? So three different states were ministered to in this five-day period that I was over there. Uh, team A. I'm breaking it down. I don't even know if they would say it like this, but this is what I this is what I saw when it was all said and done. Team A was Paco and Manuel and Sister Rosario. All right. Uh, so what they did was part of part of what they did was they had outdoor revivals in the town square. That part of the money that y'all helped with, the money that I gave personally, and he, that went towards arranging. Outdoor revivals in the town square. People were saved. Amen. And also, it was her anniversary of her church, so they had a big service over there for that also. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about was Tomalipas and Tampico. Well, that was where they were. And then Team B was all these people. It's hard for you to see. Maybe it might be hard for you to see, but you can see Ramon. Everybody here, except for these two people here. I don't know who that lady is. The man with the accordion is actually the pastor. He's a 91-year-old pastor. We'll talk about him later. But you got Ramon. You got me. You got Gowdy. There's a man there in the back. He's an American. His name is David Chesteen. He's actually the pastor of Souls Harbor Church in Amelia. Long story on that. Back next to him is a guy named Chewy. El Pianisto. He plays the keyboards and El Cantante, he's a singer, and he toted his equipment around everywhere that we went. It was, it was stuck in the back of the van, and we hauled that stuff everywhere that we went, and we trudged through, and, and, and anyway, praise God. Uh, next to him is a man named Alfredo, uh, and he basically did all the work. He put all the luggage up and down, and, 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 and drove a lot of the time. The other two people, Really and truly, they don't go to Ramon's church or anything. They they had the van. They're they're, minis they're missionaries, and uh, they were some powerhouse believers. Um, but you know, Ramon, they wanted to go. Right? And I'm telling you right now, like this wasn't like this wasn't easy living. You understand what I'm saying? It's like you want to go to this? Yeah, we want to go to this. And Ramon's like, I don't have a big enough van to carry y'all. Well, we can use our van. Hallelujah. And so that was the group. It was a. Uh, that, that was the group of us that went. We went to uh, San Luis Porto C and another state, Hidalgo, was where Team B went. While Team A stayed in Tampico, we traveled the roads up in the mountains and we, we visited these various places. We traveled over 800 miles. I did my calculation wrong in those, in three days, not five days. I flew in on Thursday. I flew out on Monday. We did, my ministry was done Sunday, uh, Sunday night and Monday we did some more ministry because the guy uh, Manuel was preaching in Tampico so we went to watch him but we traveled over 800 miles in this van uh, hallelujah missioneros de Cristo and we and there were and, and there was uh, I don't know what her name is but these are the missionaries that had the van and uh, well I already told you about all that I already named who they were so we went 800 miles and there were eight of us in that van amen and we did that in three days praise God five events five events I preached four times in three days and Gowdy preached one time and the only reason why he didn't want me to preach that night was because we were out in the open and he's hypersensitive and thinks that you know something bad is going to happen to the gringo all right so so in this uh, particular uh, slide. This is actually the construction that's going on in Ramon's second church. So this is day one. After we ate breakfast at Louise Mesa's house, we went to visit the construction. Amen. At Ramon's new church. It's hard for you to tell how big this is, but his first church holds 250 people. This was going to hold even more. Okay. And it's the same kind of construction. They make everything with cement and cinder blocks. Um, 
so, and so anyway, this this um, this build right here is 40 miles from Tampico, and we went over there. The reason I got Manuel Espinal up there is we went over there so that he could see what was going on, okay? Because again, he's putting money into this, and also Gaudi wanted him to see what's going on because Gaudi wants to make sure that people that are investing in this are aware of what's happening, and he's being held accountable, amen, for, uh, for, what is, for what's being done. Praise God. Okay, so here we go. So then we had to go back. So this is day one. I'm just trying to tell you what day one was. We ate breakfast. We went to Manuel's. Oh, so we had to we had to bring him back to the hotel. If I did, if I didn't put the right picture here, then we'll get back to it in a second. But it was important. Uh, I was thinking about Gaudi, and this this scripture came to my heart because this is the Apostle Paul. I'm not trying to compare Gaudi to the Apostle Paul. I'm trying to make a point. Sometimes when you face certain things, you begin to see another angle of what's going on, right? And in 2 Corinthians 11, 27 through 28, the Apostle Paul said, In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. And here he was, just had this stroke, all these other things going on, and I can tell you that he is very concerned about the well-being of these churches that were over there. So again, this is still day one. We get in the van after we drop Manuel Espinal off, yeah. this lady here. You can't really tell from this picture. I don't know what I did with my picture, but this she built this church out of pallets. <laughs> And I just want you to know, like she had a tarp on her church and she built this church out of pallets. Praise God. I don't know. Maybe. He, and look, you should see the inside of it. I don't even know what I did with it. I wish you could see the inside. I mean, it was amazing. And so, and now we're expanding. And that's for now, you know, finance money uh, in, into that also. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise. So we went, we left, we left. Tamaulipas, 92 miles on day one. We drove to San Luis Port of Sea, uh, which is, and we went to the city of Valles, uh, Mexico. Amen. And I preached my first message in Valles. We got there at nighttime, like right around nighttime. And look at this. I preached, I don't know if you can tell it, alcohol, alcohol, alcoholismo and drug addiction. It was a drug rehab. So I go up in here. And, you know, they wouldn't let me take any pictures. So I go in there and they got like about 60 young people crammed up in this little room. Now, like, well, I'm trying to tell you that the conditions ain't nothing pretty. I accidentally opened up the door to go use the baños, which is B's bathroom. And when I went in there, the dude was this kind of weird. He was on the toilet. But when I finally got my chance to go in there, the, wa the water was all over the floor. The place stuck. We get up in here, and there's like 60 people crammed up in here. Hallelujah. And then, and then Chewy gets up there, and he starts playing music and singing Jesus. And, and they just they start worshiping the Lord, and the Holy Spirit falls. I go to preaching, praise God, and tell them my story about how I was in three drug rehabs by the time I was 19. And I told them it's not a little bit of Jesus and a little bit of voodoo. It's not a little bit of Jesus and a little bit of AA. It's not a little bit of Jesus and a little bit of Mary. It's all about Jesus and what he did and he will transform your life and if you will allow him to come in he will do a work in your heart and, and he will he will bring his light on the inside of you amen and they responded to the gospel and we prayed for them and they were weeping and they were receiving amen it was one interesting thing if you think about if the name francisco comes across your mind one of the guys was like americano and so I started talking to this young guy and come to find out he, was, he wasn't born in America, but he lived in America for 18 years. His little brother was born in America. And I'm just assuming he probably got arrested because he had a tattoo across the front of his neck that said fallen angel. And he was all tatted up. And he said, yeah, man, they deported me. And so he was up in this place, and I said, well, that's not your identity anymore. He said, I know, dude, I'm about to get out of here, and I'm going to live, you know, I want to live for the Lord. So I told him, I said, you're the only name I'm going to remember coming out of here tonight. So I promise you, Francisco, I will be praying for you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so we did. Now, now, I just put this on there. There's that 91-year-old pastor right there. Okay. The way we got our entry into this drug rehab was through his son, Pepe. And the way we met Pepe was through this pastor. And the way we met this pastor was through uh, that we got an invite. 
Okay, like last year or something like that. But yeah, through his son, we got the opportunity to go minister at this drug rehabilitation. So that was my first uh, ministry. Now, that night, we ended up sleeping in this house right here. Now, this was, this was a really nice, this was, you know, I used to complain whenever, you know, if God, I hate to admit it to you. Can I be transparent? Hallelujah. One time we slept in a hotel room that wasn't a Hampton Inn, and I said, dude, what are you doing? The air conditioner doesn't even work in this place. <laughs> anyway, we slept in these people's home. Praise God. The reason I put this, this guy over here all the way to your right, his name is Alfredo. Alfredo met Gaudi and them last year whenever they ministered at this church. And Alfredo, you know, Alfredo, opened up his home. This man basically gave us his home. No, no, you don't understand. He let all, he let three, three of us sleep in, no, four of us sleep in their bedroom. I'm pretty sure I slept in their, in their bed. They had four beds in one room and they, they gave us the house at night. They were there early in the morning to feed us breakfast and they were there late at night to feed us supper and then they would leave again and, and we would sleep in their home and he went and stayed with his cousin down the road. Yeah. Now, another thing I want you to see is that that sign in the back of his. So, yeah, this is Alfredo right here. And uh, that's his name, Alfredo. And uh, he, I wanted you to see. You see that sign on the back of the wall of the church? It says, Mi casa, casa de, one AC on, Sandra, Yamada. Means something like my house is a house of prayer. Well, on his, in this room right here. The one to the left where we were eating at the table where Gaudi's right there, that's his kitchen dining area. On the back of that wall back there, he's got a sign up there. It says, Mi uh, Señor, El Señor es my pastor. So it means Jesus is my pastor. And I was thinking, yeah, boy, I tell you, somebody walk in your house, they'd be thinking, yeah, that's exactly what I thought. I knew I didn't have to go to church because Jesus is my pastor. Well, look, let me tell you something about Alfredo. That's not, see, I'm drawing a line to the old man. So Alfredo, even though he has on his wall, El Señor is my pastor, meaning Jesus is my pastor. He doesn't have the attitude, I don't need a church, I don't need a pastor. His attitude was, because you see, the cross will begin to chisel away at your flesh. This brother's heart is, he, when he found out, I don't know how he knew this 91-year-old pastor, but he connected himself to this pastor. They were the first couple in this pastor's church. And look, I'm got it, I got it saved for later. It was the second to last event that, that I preached at, was at their church. They, they were busting out of the, out of the doors. Like, we, they need to expand their, their church. Okay, anyway, so I'm just saying, he's got, he just had a heart of gold and it remembered that scripture, hospitality, lover of strangers. And I just experienced that at a whole other level, distributing to the necessity of the saints given to hospitality. So that was day one. Amen. And so here's day two. And so it's time to get up and go. And uh, what we did was we left Valles and we went to, I can't tell, 91 miles, and we went to a place called El Nacio Mente. I don't think that that was the city or the village. I think that that was actually a place. And the place El Nacio Mente uh, was described. Look, there it is right there. You see that water right there? Now, don't go look at Gaudi's page because he put a video of me. I'm like, dude, take that video off. Thank God that guy Chewy knew how to do it because there was one video you can still see on there. I'm like, dude, okay, that's all right. The other one, oh my gosh, dude, what are you doing? I mean, like, it, Danielle's like, it was like a Baywatch video, but not like a Baywatch video. If you get what I'm trying to say. You know, so I wouldn't have even been able to go to this place, but the guys in the van wanted him to bring me there because I'm telling you, when I went to Cancun, I snuck out because I, because Gaudi wouldn't let you do nothing, dude. I'm staying at a resort on a beach in Cancun, and they told me I had three hours, dude. I jetted out when he wasn't looking, and I ran and jumped into the ocean, and I was over there swimming. You know, you got to blame my dad for that. My dad threw me. He said, go swim in that boy and when we lived in Singapore. He said, you can say you swam in the Red China Sea. And so now, ever since then, I tried to swim in any body of water I could get into. But anyway, we were, we were over here, and I said, well, dude, they told me that I can't swim. He said, no, you got 30 minutes to swim. Dude, I jumped in there, man. It was so awesome. It was like a spring. It was cool. It was clear. 
And it was, anyway, so that was 30 minutes because he put on his video, oh, look at Pastor Mac <laughs> suffering for the king. 30 minutes. Bro. And let me tell you, that was the only 30 minutes. But, but the whole thing was so much fun. Amen? So, hallelujah. About 15 minutes away, we end up at this mountain mission. All right? And one of the things I noticed, I'm like, dude, stop. There were mandarin trees growing everywhere on this mountain. Okay? So, look, we get stopped by this truck that's got these mandarins in it. And, uh, you know, they're like, yeah, eat some mandarins. You know, so we're eating some mandarins. And I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you, like, I, ha I had these seeds. And I was like, dude, I'm so aggravated that the government and Monsanto and the GMO yes, stuff and yes. that the seeds. And they asked if you got any seeds when you're flying back. I'm like, oh, you know, and I was like, oh, yeah. boy, I want to bring some seeds. <laughs> and I stuck them in my pocket. But I, immediately I was like, I can't even see. But anyway, I'm leaving them in my pocket. So anyway, I get we get over there. Now I want to show you this. So now we're now we're hauling the equipment. This is a speaker, and we're going. It, it, okay, now you can't take the van anymore. Now you got to start walking up the mountain. And so here these guys come in, and they're and they're helping with the speakers. This young lady, she's got two ice boxes. Those are for some tamales. We'll get to the tamales later. This is a little man-made bamboo bridge that we crossed over. Uh, praise God. And here's Brother Gally. That was the picture with the stick as he climbed up the mountain. Here's the lean-to right here. They don't call it a church because it doesn't have a church building. And they don't really have a pastor, but they have a leader. Okay? So Mr. Chewy, who, who's the El Pianista and the Cantante, he set up his musical equipment. I got some pictures for you, Rich, so you can appreciate it later. Uh, and he set up his equipment. <coughs> he started playing music. He started singing and playing music. Next thing you know, they start coming down from the mountain, bro. They start filling up. And I'm telling you right now, look, I wanted you to see this. That's root. That's chickens up in the tree. Right there where I'm preaching, they got chickens in the trees. Look, this is the baño. That was the worst baño I saw the whole time. I did not have to sit on that, thank the Lord, because there were flies flying up out of it. But, and look, but, and there was a hog that lived right next door to the baño. And look, look at that hog, man. That thing was huge. And I kept taking pictures of it, and it got up. And I was like, if you're going to take pictures, feed me. It started, like, growling at me anyway. I wanted to give you all a picture. So it starts filling up. Praise God. En el nombre de Jesús, haciendo sanidades y milagros, Padre, gracias. Que tu palabra toque las vidas, los corazones y las almas, Señor. Gracias. Toma control de esta alabanza. Que este mensaje, que esta palabra pueda llegar, Señor. Allá en los hogares, allá donde está la familia, Señor. Allá donde está el enfermo, allá donde está el alcohólico, el adicto, allá donde está aquella persona atormentada. Ahí tu palabra pueda llegar. En el nombre de Jesús, reprendo toda fuerza del enemigo y todo. So he's over there praying. I just wanted y'all to hear Ramon praying a little bit. He's over there. Palabra means the word. He said he said, came against the spirit of infirmity, I'm pretty sure, up in there. He was praying for people's fam families. He was saying, uh, coming against the people being tormented. Praise God. And, and I'm just telling you, man, when this brother, when this brother starts praying. So I wanted you to kind of, I was trying to give you a picture. There was well over 55, 60 people up under this tent. Whenever we, we started having service um, and this particular message and was whenever I got there that the Lord said, the reason you got seeds in your pocket is you're going to pre preach on seeds and fruit. And so, man, it was perfect. I had them seeds in my, and, then, and I pulled that seed out and I started talking about the gospel as a seed. And I started talking about how God wants to do a work on the inside of us and he wants to produce fruit from us and through us. And that, and that I believe by the power of God that, that, that the spirit of evangelism was going to get on the inside of these people. And that more, because God said this thing had already doubled since the last time he had been there. And that, and that, that people, they were going to minister to people that are, that were in the mountains that the zeal of the evangelist was going to enter into them and so yeah we so we prayed that and uh and, and this is the leader right there with his hands lifted high and this little girl right here let's see i put a uh yeah i put an arrow about her she gave her heart to the lord she was the sweetest little thing so you know whenever you're a preacher and you're preaching you look at people's faces i hate to tell y'all to do that i'm like oh lord this person's bored uh oh, I'm about to lose that one back there. They're about to go to sleep. Yeah, they've probably been working hard, though, cut us a slack faster. And so I'm over here, like, seeing all this stuff. Man, this girl was glued in. Dude, she had this precious smile on her face. 
and I could see that the gospel was just ministering to her. And look, whenever we did the altar call at first, nobody was coming up. I looked at her and I did like that. And dude, she came up. She got saved. She was weeping. These people were weeping. We were laying hands on them. I was weeping. I'm over here trying to pray in Spanish. Hallelujah. Mas oración. Mas palabra. Mas Espíritu Santo. Mas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the nombre de Jesus Cristo. Change them, Lord. Change them, Lord. Cambia corazón. Change their heart. Oh, Lord. Grab a hold of them, Lord. And then I start praying in English. I'll pray in tongues. Hallelujah, Lord. Make them evangelists. Win souls. And I'm weeping and crying because they're crying. I'm just like, Lord, I'm so ashamed of myself. Hallelujah. People come to church under a piece of this queen, man. They got little their baños, man. Oh, hallelujah. This was the guy that owned the house. You look at his shirt. God's work our hands. Praise Amen. God. And so look, Galvin brought some clothes. And so they start after, this is after, I don't think that they knew there was clothes. Maybe they did, I don't know. Used clothes. Yeah. Like he didn't go shopping at Gap or something like that. So they go to get clothes. This was something. This kid here, man, I saw him walking and you can't see his face too good. But he looks hopeful. And by the time he got there, there was nothing left for him. Oh. And, and then I noticed his pants and how high they were. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it kind of, and I was weeping, you know, it kind of touched my heart. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it or not, but I was gonna try to move this out of the way. This thing in the middle is called a tamal, and it's made with chicken, right? So they killed their chickens, and, they, and, they, and this was to feed everybody. It's this huge tamale is what it is. And it's wrapped in banana leaves. And they cook it overnight. Gowdy wouldn't let me eat it. He wouldn't, he wouldn't eat it either. But look, I wanted to tell you about this, these ice chests. So these people, Gowdy said we offered them from, from, the, from the money that we gave we, they, to, buy, to do the ingredients for tamales. So they killed their chicken and they wrapped well over 100 tamales. They refused the offering and they made those tamales for whenever we, for our next adventures, uh, whenever we, when we left here this particular day, we brought those tamales with us. That's what the ice chest was for. All right. And so anyway, okay. So here's day two. This is still day two is what I'm trying to tell you. We, w we woke up in the morning and went swimming, went to the mountain, preached. Uh, and then, and then now we're leaving, and we're going back from El Nacimiento to Val Valles, back to Valles, okay, where we were, and another 91 miles. And this is when I get out. We go, we drive up to the hospital, and and there's people all over the streets. And so that's the first thing that I see when I get out. I'm, I'm trying to over here talking to Gallaudet. I'm like, dude, what's that? The homeless people live over here. He's like, no, Matt. That's family members. That their families are sick in the hospital and they don't have anywhere to go and they don't live over here. Dude, these people were like, they're miserable. Like this is like third world country. This is like the Bible days. They have they have no hope. And then all of a sudden, while I'm looking at all this, uh, I told you about the tamales. That was what this was for. Uh, again, the word about hospitality, lover of strangers, because them people made them tamales. For us to use in ministry uh, for people that they didn't even know. They, they didn't know these people. They're two hours away at a hospital. And then women are over there wrapping tamales for us to bring. And then all of a sudden while I'm looking at this, I hear loud prayer. Because I'm over here taking pictures. And I turn around and they done jumped out the van. And there goes Ramon and Gowdy. And they're just like praying right in the middle of the street. Around all of these people setting the atmosphere. Amen. And here's Gowdy. You can't tell. But you see how it's like a little light on his shirt right there in the middle. He's got a light wrapped around his neck. He's got the Bible. And he goes to preaching the gospel. Right, the bam. He's preaching the gospel and he's he's preaching de la cruz, the cross of Christ, and he's preaching the blood of Jesus, and he's preaching hope, hallelujah. And and so and people start responding, amen, to the gospel. They start clapping and, and getting excited about the gospel. That was at the end of the message. Praise God. Some anointed, some oil cloths, like it said in the book of Acts. Because they got, we can't, they, you can't go in there. And we're like, we're trying to give them hope. Listen, the Apostle Pablo, he gave them some anointed handkerchiefs. You bring them. It's, and, and I heard, I saw Ramon. It's not 
is say is not in this, it's not in this, it's in him. Hallelujah. And they were we get handed them all out. And then you can't see it, but those are tamales. We distributed those well over a hundred tamales and refrescos. That was my job. I was pouring the that's a soft drink. I was pouring, and I'm telling you, we we fed over a hundred some people in less than 10 minutes. Wow. Uh, and, and so and then after after that's over with, all of a sudden I see Ramon over there and he's praying this woman through because I can hear some of the words he's saying. I'm like, hallelujah. And, and so I go over there and I take this picture. Well, then she turns around and she brings another guy over there. Uh, amen. And this is, I want y'all to hear this prayer. Oh, man, it was so good. Praise God. He said, write my name. And I'm like, oh, I know he is. And see, I'm learning these words. He's like, he's telling, repeat after me. Escribe mi nombre. Único y suficiente Salvador de mi vida. Escribe mi nombre en el libro de la vida. Creo en el libro de la vida. Write my name in the book of life. Hallelujah. Por mi maldición. Gracias, Jesús. Gracias, Jesús. Thank you, Jesus. Llena el vacío que había en mi corazón. En el nombre de Jesús. Cambia el corazón. Ayúdame. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, dude. And look, I said, I, and I was in the van, and I just busted out with it after we left. It's screaming me nombre. And then I repeated, and they were like, oh, I was like, hallelujah. And so for the rest of the trip, they would just all of a sudden out of nowhere, because I've been driving for hours, they would say, it's screaming me nombre. And they'd all bust out laughing, because I was like, dude, I've never heard of life praying like that before. Repeat after me. Write my name in the book of life, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So that was the end of day two. And there we are in Alfredo's front yard under the canopy of his trees. Poor guy, he looked like he was in pain. Hallelujah. And so day three, this is Sunday morning. You know, we've already, we've already preached, what, one, two, and then Gaudi preached the third time. And here is day three in the morning, and we go to the church. 91-year-old pastor. And look, the reason the accordion's on there is because Gaudi wanted y'all to know that we pay that part of the money that comes from the church purchased this accordion oh, that the old man had been wanting an accordion and he was able to get him one. Praise God. And so here's Chewy setting up his music equipment. And while we were in, even in the mountains at times, people knew him. Like, and they were buying his music. He had it on little, you know, uh, you little, know the di yeah, seed drives. Or whatever. The sound, you know, that really, that really to be able to see. I think it was a cord keyboard. I don't know the quality, but we towed it all the stuff around. That was his little switch, his little board. Uh, amen. And that was a speaker. I took that in the mountains. And uh, that, that was basically the package. He had two speakers. And I'm telling you, man, that stuff was pretty loud whenever and then people, at least, you know, on the mountains to, for the people to come down. This is whenever we started praying for him. So after I preached here, one of, the, one of the things, I don't remember even the passage that I preached out of, but I remember I was talking about how the Lord's been speaking, and uh, how I've even been talking about that. Here's some about wisdom in Proverbs chapter 8, and how she's been saying, won't you come unto me, you simple, that wisdom stands at the gate. She stands at the doorway, and you know how I do? Sometimes when I open the door, I kind of felt like the Lord had showed me the night before that I was going to do that, and that maybe there would actually be somebody there. Well, there was actually... A flea market. Nobody came into church. I was hoping. But I, I went out that door a couple of times. And dude, I know that they were eating it up, the people. Because I was like, Aki, Aki, come in here. Verdad, truth. And I was trying to explain to them, you know, that when the fire of the Lord gets a hold of us, and, he, and the zeal of the evangelist gets on the inside of us, that he wants us to, to be used for his kingdom. Amen. There was a lawyer in there, and I told him the story that... They don't have nurse practitioners over there, but I tried to explain to them that I'm not really a doctor. I'm not a nurse, but I'm in between. I can describe uh, la medicina, and uh, but but I was and I told him. I said, look, I told people, I told the jefe, the boss, we're a package deal. Me and Jesus, we either come together or we don't come. 
Amen. And and I felt like that that kind of got a hold of that lawyer a little bit. I mean, it looked like it anyway. So this what I want you to see is while we were praying for these people, this young man, he'd come up for prayer. They're, I mean, they're again, they're just all weeping. I'm weeping, praying Spanish, praying tongues, praying. You know, and we're praying for all these people. And when I prayed for this guy, I don't know who this dude was. I just saw that he was a young man, had a wife. And they had a baby in this crowd. I mean, this this church, I didn't get a good picture of it. They were busting out the walls. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, okay, this is, this is connected to the old man's house, you know. And so anyway, I prayed for him. I said, Lord, make him a preacher. All right. So this dude gets up there and he starts giving this testimony about how Ramon prayed for him last year and that he was on drugs and that the Lord set him free. And so he starts off slow. And, 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 and then all of a sudden, I, I was like, what in the world? I pulled my phone out and started videoing it because it was almost like the Holy Ghost hit him and he went to preaching. And I mean, I don't know, maybe he was a preacher before, but I'm thinking, dude, I just prayed that over this dude. And Yadi, he wouldn't let us eat that either. But you can see, you can see the, the congregation out there eating just like a real family. I mean, we do some of that too. Family atmosphere, praise God, fellowship, hospitality. Yadi sent me a text this morning. The people from Baez, I talked to them. They're all so full of joy and they already want to know when you're coming back. Praise God. Uh, so this is day three. Um, we leave Baez and now we're going back the other way. Okay, so we had to come back over here to preach in the morning. Um, so we came back to Baez and we went to the hospital that night. So the next day we go, we, we go back where we were before all the way through 180 miles this time, through Baez, through, from Baez, through El Nacimiento and into the state of Hidalgo. My, my phone on the picture said a place called Zojuolo. I don't know. Uh, anyway, this is where we ended up. This is a church that Gaudi built with his own money. You know, this is one thing I'm going to tell you. Like, this brother had been a supervisor in welding and thousands and thousands of dollars. I've seen it. That he, with his own money, built this church. And this was right before the pandemic. I've met this pastor before in the past. His name's Espinoza. Uh, anyway, right after Gaudi built the church, the pandemic happened. It's a nice church, you know. Uh, and it, there's nothing in there. Because after the pandemic happened, they told them they couldn't have church in close quarters. So they said, all right, Ramon went up there and helped them pour another slab. They added a lean-to to the outside that's bigger than that. And it's on the side of a mountain. And now they just have church out there. Well, I didn't realize, but when we show up, dude, it's like they're having revival, bro. Like they already up in there. This young uh, this young music group, uh, they're, look, look at the name of the church. Iglesia de Cristo, Rios de Agua Viva. Which means the church of, of, of Christ, the river of, uh, the river of life, the, the river of the water of life. And uh, so, yeah, here, here they're playing. Look at he's got a drummer, a little dude with some electronic drums. These kids are probably like 17 to 19 years old. He's got a bass player. I didn't expect that up in the mountains, but I'm trying to tell you that. Like, I get up on this mountain, and they already have a revival, dude. I'm like, what in the world? And, like, I mean, they're all there worshiping the Lord. And this is a, this is a church that Gaudi built several years ago and, and put this pastor in charge. And, look, I mean, they were worshiping the Lord. That was a worship song. And so this is at the end. It's hard to tell because, I mean, I got caught up in starting to pray. But they all came forward for prayer. I, on this, on the way over there, this particular message, uh, <laughs> the Lord, I was like, what am I preaching on? I was flipping through the scriptures. The Lord said, I preached on a mountain. Preach what I preached. I mean, he didn't say it exactly like that. It was, but in the end, that's what it was. 
He said, I preached, I preached on the mountain when I was like the Beatitudes. Yeah. And I went to it and whenever, and that's what I preached on. And I preached, I preached the zeal of the evangelist. I preached that God wants us to mourn for what he mourns for, that souls. And I preached, you know what I'm saying? Like the meat shall inherit the earth, that God's looking to change people's hearts. Amen. And, uh, and so, yeah, so we preached and then, and then we prayed for him for well over an hour and a half. At least an hour and a half. I mean, they were weeping again. I was weeping that whole nine eight yards again. I mean, one guy at the end gave a testimony. My leg got healed. The pain was gone. One girl said that she was about to kill herself. Uh, and Gowdy, you know, was able to minister to her. Uh, again, weeping, healing, emotional, physical. I didn't feel comfortable uh, making the picture bigger. Because you could see the woman's face. After church, right across the street, we went over to this woman's house to pray for her because she was bedridden. And we took the, the Ramon, I was praying, and he was praying in Spanish, took authority over spiritual infirmity. So we're expecting, amen, to hear a good report on that. So that was the end of day three. This was the house that we slept in in the mountains. The walls made out of bamboo that split in half. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, look, I didn't know this till the very end. Look, they, they made a flyer. Uh, El Ministerio Evangelistico. Proclamando, like proclaim El Reino de los Cielos. Proclaiming the kingdom of heaven. Matthew Herbert. <laughs> and so anyway, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Let me take a picture of that. I had, and Gowdy didn't even know they were doing that. So they had advertised it. I mean, it was like, it was so, like, it was a big deal. The Gringo was cool to do. And so I woke up that morning. This is where I slept. Took a picture of that. You can see that. I mean, I, I kind of shared with Danielle. She's kind of worried sometimes about holes in the house. I'm like, yeah, you've been tripping for sure. <laughs> with this right here. Amen. Uh, but yeah, that's what we said. But you know what's crazy is I slept the best that night than I did the whole trip over there. I'm pretty sure I was tired. But anyway, uh, so that day we uh, we went back. That The next morning we woke up and that was where that little picture came from. We were on the side of the mountain with that. And then we drove. Uh, I saw how fast I did that because I knew y'all were going to be tired. And, uh, and here's a picture of a panoramic picture of the valley when we got out to take a picture of that. That's uh, overseeing from the mountain. And then we went back uh, that night, and uh, Manuel, that was my last night there, Manuel Espinal was uh, preaching at one of these open air revivals, and um, these, these, this guy gave his heart to the Lord, a family rededicated their life, and that's Pastor Rosario it, with her back turned, and I never really got to work with her because she was in Tampico the whole time. But after Manuel prayed for these people, I went over there and I got her. And I was like, uh, la, fam la familia, oraison. I said, the family needs prayer. And so she starts praying with him. And I'm praying. And I'm weeping again. And, I'm, and, do, and then she starts pastoring him right there. I knew she was because I could just tell she was just ministering to him. And she, she just kept, kept at it. You know what I'm saying? And hugging on him, loving on him. And then, and then she was about to go. And I said, and then with this dude, I said, uh, Nueva La Vida. Uh, new, I was trying to say new life. And she was like, oh, okay. And so she goes and she prays and I'm praying with her. And she did the same thing with him. She stayed. And after a while, I was like, man, this is awkward. I'm just kind of standing around. So I, let, I, I went and moved. And she just like kept ministering to the guy, praying with him. And uh, yeah. So basically, that's it. That was yesterday at 545, the airport in Tampico.